Hi there, my name is Axiom, and in this video I'm going to be doing an update on an older video that I did, showing stairs, teleports, and basic trap examples in version 10 of Foundry. Okay, so first we'll quickly go over stairs and teleports. First thing, I'm going to go over to the tile controls, and I'm going to go to the tile browser. I'm going to go and find some of JB2A's assets for the job. And I'm going to go into the generic folder in their full Patreon library. Then down to zoning. Then find the standard arrow that I normally use for denoting stairs. My players are now at the point that if they see this icon, they know that that one will be doing the teleport. So I try and keep it consistent throughout all my games. I'm going to double click on this tile. And then I'm going to change the rotation to 270 in this case. So I'm going to be denoting an up arrow. I'm then going to copy this one more time and place it as a down arrow with a different direction for the reverse on the teleporter. I would usually go around the map and put those tiles down wherever I had a set of stairs or a, a need to do a teleporter. And then I would go to the next steps. I'm going to go back and double click on the tile again. Go over to triggers, which is the part of Monk's active tile triggers that's uh, allowing all of this stuff to work. And I'm going to leave things here as all tokens on enter will allow us to happen. I'm going to go to the actions section and then click add. I'm going to go back down to teleport. It's going to be current tokens. And then I'm going to select coordinates. I'm going to go to this select location option over here then click on the screen to pick our location point. I'm going to turn on snap to canvas. I don't want it to animate a canvas pan or delete the source tokens or anything like that. If you're changing between scenes, which this can do, some of these other uh, options are required at that point. And I do like to leave avoid other tokens on at destination. And then I hit update. And now that teleport should be set up correctly. So I'm going to use this token here as an example, bring this over, move on to that tile, and it instantly jumps to the other location. Over and above that is I will do the reverse for the return. So I will, will go back into tile controls again, Double click on the image, go across to triggers, go back to the actions and again, pick teleport one more time. I'm going to select the location, snap to grid, avoid other tokens at destination and update. And now that's that set of stairs is complete. OK, here we are back here with the second part of the example, which is building the basic trap example into a chest. So I'm going to go to the tile browser here and just bring in a tile for the job. So I have here a closed chest tile. I'm going to size that up in, in readiness. So the idea of this one is, is that a player will come up to the chest. They will make a check against it uh, to see if they can unlock it. If they fail the check, they will trigger a poison trap. If they pass the check, the chest will open and they'll be able to loot what's within it. This does require making sure that you have obviously Monk's active tile triggers installed. You also do need Monk's token bar to allow for the requested roles to happen. So let's get started in here. Okay, so here we are in the player view. The player can double click on the chest. It will say, do you wish to try and unlock the chest? We can hit yes. And they've rolled a check against this to try and open it. And in this case, there's a dialogue for the chest opens. They click it and they get access to the chest. On the GM view here, I can click on the chest and close it again to reset the system. And trying one more time with the player opening the chest, they click on the chest, they try and unlock it. And in this case, they've triggered a trap. They can hit the dialogue. The poison has automatically happened and it's triggered a constitution saving throw and it's told me that they've passed. So this gives us the basics of a chest trap. Now let's go into the tile and see what's actually going on. So first things first, we're going to add the images to this tile. So we have the version of a closed chest, open chest, and the poison version of the chest. I'm going to double click on the tile here. I'm going to go across to triggers, and then we're going to go to this images section. Now under this images section in here, I need to add in all three versions of my chest. So the closed version as number one, the open version of the chest is number two, and finally, the poison trap version of the chest, I'm going to then open as number three. I'm going to update the tile. Then when I go back into the tile, we'll have all three images here. And to test this, I'm going to change the shown image to number two here and update the tile. And as we can see, the tile image has changed to image number two. I'll go back in here and try number three. And we can see that there's the poison version of the chest. And then I'm going to go back to number one. And we know that they're set up as one, two, and three. Back here in the GM view, let's go back over to tile controls. So obviously we set up the images before, 
but now it's the main thing of looking at the actions. This is a fairly long list, but the key takeaways over and above my original video are anchor points are now changed to being called landings. So the first thing that happens in this action list is first things we do is on a double click, we check, is this a GM or is this a player? And then we go to the specific landing pages here, landing GM or landing player. And then we trigger all the rest of the actions underneath each of those. So if I look at landing GM, I do switch tile image to one, which is the closed chest image with a fade action. And then I stop the remaining actions on the tile. So the key one is, is that any of these branches that we make, GM, player, etc., make sure that you have stop actions in there to make it not carry on down the list after you've hit an, an, an end to what you need to happen. The more complicated one we have is obviously player. So the double click from a player, I've got this doing a show dialogue option, which we'll go in here. And this is showing a dialogue. It's a confirmation dialogue. I've given it a name and the content of, would you like to try and unlock the chest? Then yes, go to and no go to. These are what landings to go to. So we've got player lock check or player done. So that dialogue has two possible outcomes. One, they go to player done where there are no more actions. They don't want to continue or they, they can hit the yes and go to they want to do the lock check. And then in this case, I've made it a dexterity ability check with a DC 15. I've made it do an auto roll and then I've hit update. Now that we've made it roll on that, we can add this redirect roll result. So what we've worked out here is is that past tokens will go to the landing page of lock past and fail tokens will go to the landing of lock fail. So on a lock past, we do a dialogue of the chest opens. We then switch the image tile to the number two, which we know is the open chest. And then we stop all the actions on the tile as they've managed to open the chest. The reverse can be true in here with lock fail. We show a, a dialogue that they have triggered a trap. We switch the image to the poison version of the chest. We then ask for a constitution saving throw with a DC 15. And then again, we do a stop remaining actions on this tile. Obviously, these actions could be in more in depth than I am currently showing here, but hopefully this at least gives you the basics of what's required to make that kind of trap work. And if there's interest in making other traps in more detail, please let me know in the comments below. I hope this has helped. Thank you all for listening and please like and subscribe for more content.